Armando, thanks for the reply. Um, I just want to say one quick thing right now, though there's definitely more to respond to. But um, my criticism of Daily Coast as, as organizing uh, protests is entirely on how it's tried to do that organization. You know, my, I helped build that site as along with a lot of other people, both by being interested in actively, like, you know, I had one of the first get-togethers, you know, um, bought Cosa beer in Berkeley, and, um, you know, and none of, not that any, is any of that's a big deal, but I mean, I was on board for what the thing was becoming and the potential, and the way that it progressed is, you know, caused a disillusionment. Um, not entirely one of surprise, but definitely a strong disillusionment because of the potential. And it is the way that they tried to organize things. You know, in the past when I was younger and lived in the city and was involved more in protest, you know, I did think it was somewhat disorganized. But I'll tell you what, it's not that everybody shows up. It's not that all the leftists of different stripes show up, and I'm not embarrassed of stinky hippies like Marco seems to be, and I'm not embarrassed of floats and goofy, uh, you know, art of the people kind of stuff. Um, the disorganization is, is related on to other things, which, frankly, Daily Coast still does help with, because as I said, peer-to-peer -peer communication works. People talk to other people, and they use Daily Coast that way. That's one of the problems with the bannings, is a lot of people using these for lateral conversations. You know, I was still able to use Daily Coast for lateral conversations um, after Marcos banned me. He banned me because he didn't like me, because of my relationship with him, but he really destroyed my relationship with another progressive. So I don't think that's good. He's That's his method of control, and it's a, you know, it's... I don't think that's good. It's basically destructive. He's killing relationships. Um, and, uh, of course, you know, people that were really close to me, it didn't matter. I had other contacts with people that I maybe had met there, um, but had some further interest to know them personally. But a whole range outside of that, you know, I only met there. Um, it was no great loss to me. I was already disillusioned with the site, and so... The, those relationships were not necessarily, um, see, I don't want to say they weren't valuable, because they are, you know, people, these are human beings, and they're interesting, and, you know, but, um, anyway, I was already, I, well, I was already losing those relationships, okay, but, um, a lot of people, you know, aren't, and they've been driven from the site and silence in various ways, and I just, uh, I don't appreciate it, you know, and uh, it's a personal set of experiences that led me to have a view of disenchantment, disenchanted feelings about that site. And then, um, you know, Marcus reacted to that. So, um, you know, I, I don't, uh, it's not that I'm attacking them for trying to organize those things. It's the way in which they do. And, you know, I think, you know, I don't, I said in that that Marcos is a sexist bastard, and I realized I'm really just wanting to say that he's sexist. And I do also think that he's a bastard. And I'm, I'm not saying he's, like, mean to every woman he meets or on a personal level, <clears throat> but, you know, his, his comments seem sexist to me, and he, you know, uh, the organization of Daily Coast is very, seems anti he He buys this... Um, Rush Limbaugh feminazi stereotype. He puts his own words on it, basically. Um, you know, that's what I think. And um, and as far as the way they want to organize protests, the, the thing is this: there's a machine out there to manufacture consent. And when you start to have an influence, uh, you're given an opportunity to plug into the machine a particular way. And there's various ways to to affect the machine, but if you just plug into it, you become one of one of its organs, and you think you're having influence, because it's like, look, we wrote stories, and then they got on the press. Yeah, but meanwhile, people are from the press are feeding the stories in there, and it's like, and, um, you know, that's different than how it was when it first started and was growing. It was a real influence, and they were, they were scared that, you know, that this kind of group, for example, supporting Dean a lot, you know, might, the team might run as an independent. They were scared. And so they actually paid attention. And um, as far as I'm concerned, Marcus just rolled over. He said, wow, I get into the, the back room. And he just rolled over. And he just became another organ. 
And, you know, it's influential like Time magazine, which is to say Time gets to make a lot of money. They get to think about politics a lot, which is a lot of the people who work there are interested in. And you know what I'm saying? And so there's a reward there, and there's an influence, but it's just part of this smoke and mirrors game. And that's not what I'm interested in, and that's not what's even going on on the net. It's not really even that influential in the end, because these other networks... Uh, that when they ri- that when they, they rise up to where people notice, it, it takes some sort of an action, or it's, it becomes evident that they exist. These peer-to-peer networks, you know, that is what puts a chill into the political system, and will get it to actually change. Daily Coast was like that, and it raised up. And thanks to Marcus's conservatism, that is a very standard, old-school sort of, to me, pointless uh, way of approaching. Um, political questions that, you know, it fits perfectly into this manufacturing consent propaganda model. It's a flat machine. It's used. It gets some influence. And um, and it even still has a positive influence. But it's sort of in spite of the organization. It's because of the peer-to-peer nature of, of, of the net. And it, it does a lot to try to meddle in that peer-to-peer uh, relationship now. You know, telling you what no conspiracy theories, no calls for impeachment, you know, lots of conventional wisdom that's really like, and you better think that way, and it's ridiculous. And they want to write really, really, you know, sort of thoughtful pieces like they're, they're just all deep thinkers. And, you know, I'm, I mean, I didn't write pieces like that, you know? I didn't write pieces, I, I think I'm smart, but I didn't write pieces like, I'm a deep thinker, and it's, you know, and, you, you know, and they're, but it's like, I just want to know what people are thinking. You know, let people speak, and they're always like, it's a duplicate, shut up. I mean, there's, there's a million reasons for shutting up. I mean, you go there, you will find out that all the time, especially as the election season comes on, there's people that'll get these recommended diaries basically telling some other large group to just shut the fuck up. People that want to tell Obama how to do his campaign, shut the fuck up. You know, people that are criticizing Kerry, shut the fuck up. People that say that the, Kerry's weak on this, shut the fuck up. People that say that Kerry's doing the wrong thing, shut the fuck up. And it's still now with Obama. You know, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. And they get recommended. That's all they say. And, you know, it'll even be like, I don't write diaries. I finally had to write one to tell you all to shut the fuck up. And it's like super popular. And this should tell you something. And, um, and these things were always popular, but they just took their toll, you know. But anyway... Um, there's still a lot of people there and interesting things and, um, you know, and people that I, that I like, I think as an organization, it's a, it's a failed structure, it's failed its potential. Um, and, um, you know, now it serves, it just serves a, a, a purpose to me that's just old school and it's not what the peer-to-peer politics is really all about.